Well, good evening, Midway family, and welcome to service tonight. I hope you have had a great week. And uh, man, I've been enjoying our study on early church leaders. And so tonight we're going to continue on that study in Acts chapter uh, number 11. You should have um, an email that you received to be able to take some notes uh, to fill out your worksheet there as well. And so, um, I mean, I'm excited. I'm going to pray for us and then we'll jump into it. Talking about encouragement tonight. Let's pray. Father, uh, we do pray as we look at, at Acts 11. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would use this time in the Word uh, just, just to focus our attention on you and to change our hearts and our minds. In your name I pray. Amen. I want you to think about for a second someone that encourages you. Someone that encourages you. Now, I, I know that you might have several people that come into mind, um, but I want you to think really to someone that just jumps out, but they, they have a gift of encouragement. I was thinking about this earlier this week, and I really had several people that came to mind, but some specific people that came to my mind. Um, my friend Eric Shadle and I, uh, we had the privilege last week to talk to one of our former pastors. Of course, Eric and his family are missionaries there in Ethiopia. And, um, and we worked with them in Ethiopia and, and just had a, a wonderful time, very close friends of ours. And, um, but Eric and I had, had a chance to call and, and talk to one of our former pastors, Jason Gaddis. And uh, Pastor Gaddis was our pastor in college in the, the small church that we went to, uh, not much older than us. And now he's in Oklahoma City as a pastor as well. And um, man, talking to him for about 10 minutes, uh, and, and Eric and I talked about this, he is just was an encouragement then and is still is an encouragement. Has not changed in the 20 plus years uh, since we've been together. Um, also, I was thinking about um, Pastor Joe and Miss Judy, and specifically Miss Judy. Man, she was an encouragement, and still, even a couple years ago when we saw her, was such an encouragement to me and Amanda, and Miss Marie is someone else. Miss Marie Schuyler is someone else that I think about when I think of someone that's an encouragement. Miss Marie uh, follows that same example as well. Man, there are those that we know that have just sort of a gift of encouragement, but the truth is... We all need to be brothers and sisters of encouragement. Tonight we are going to be in Acts chapter 11. And we are going to look at the life of Barnabas. And we are going to see just how encouraged he, he was. Man, when I think about Miss Judy and Miss Marie and, and Pastor Gaddis, and there are several others, it, it's such a amazing attribute to their lives. When you can look at someone and say, man, they are just an encouragement. They are just an encouragement. And that is a gift. And there are those specifically that have God has graciously given that gift to. But as I said, man, all of us need to be people of encouragement. Acts chapter 11, we're looking at the life of Barnabas. It is a great honor to be assigned this minister of encouragement, and in the early church, that standard was set by Barnabas. His given name was Joseph, but the apostles in Jerusalem recognized this nature of him, and they nicknamed him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, son of encouragement. Acts 4.36 says this, and Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. Now, let me give you just an overview of some of the ways he was an encouragement. Uh, he sort of facilitated uh, Paul's acceptance by the Jerusalem believers, Acts chapter 9. He affirmed and encouraged the new believers in Antioch, Acts chapter 11, where we're at. He stood up for John Mark later when Paul would refuse to allow Mark to accompany them on their missionary journey. Acts chapter 15, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. The, the, the recurring theme and the recurring picture in the New Testament of Barnabas is one that went out of his way to encourage others. And this pattern in Barnabas' life is, is so much an application for you and I. 
Man, listen, we need encouragement. We need encouragement. And we need truth. And we need um, a, a solid foundation. And we need to speak that truth. But we, man, we live in a world, specifically with social media, we need encouragement. And we need to be those who encourage. Man, I, I want you to think today, who have you encouraged? Who have you went out of your way to encourage? Well, what have you said on social media that is an encouragement? Barnabas sets the standard for the early church. And, and I can't think of a, uh, such a, you know, a great thing to say at someone's funeral as to say, man, they were an encouragement. Every time I was around them, I left feeling encouraged. That's the way I feel when I talk to the people that I mentioned earlier. Acts 11, 19 through 30, it says this. Now, those who were scattered after persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. So again, Aaron spoke a couple weeks about Stephen. Last week we looked at Paul. Persecution is happening. happening. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came, he had seen the grace of God. He was glad and he encouraged them all that with purpose of heart should continue with the Lord. That's our verse of emphasis tonight. Let me read that again. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and he encouraged them all that, was that, and all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. He found him. He brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. The disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And in those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they did also, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Man, there's a lot going on in here, but it is incredible that we see that this church sent Barnabas to Antioch. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. If someone around that knew you and your family and they were to say man I need to send someone who's going to be an encouragement would that be you would that be you that was Barnabas and we'll talk about it here in a second let me give us uh, some key points in Barnabas's life he was born in a Levite family he received training in the scripture as a child he became a follower of Christ soon after the resurrection and the ascension um, as we mentioned before, his name was Joseph. Barnabas was likely a nickname given to him by the disciples. He was a leader in the early church. He was a close, close friend of Paul's. And the age and the circumstances of his death are unknown. Three things that I want to look at briefly tonight in the life of Barnabas. If you have your hand out, then you can fill this out. Take notes if you want. Number one is this, Barnabas' personality. Barnabas' personality. As I mentioned, he worked with the apostles. He worked with evangelists. He ministered with Paul for about two years. Acts 11 and chapters 13 through 15. Over 20 times are their names linked in the New Testament. He spoke on behalf of uh, and acted on behalf of others. Uh, he intervened on Paul's behalf when the apostles needed an introduction to the leadership in Jerusalem. When facing the Jerusalem council, 
uh, with the issues of the Gentiles needing the gospel. He supported Paul by contending that God saves not only Gentiles, but not only Jews, but Gentiles as well. Chapter number 15. One of the great things uh, about Barnabas is that he stood up for Paul. And really early on when Paul was being getting accepted by the apostles and, and that validation, Barnabas vouched for him. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second as well. Uh, later on, and we will talk about this, uh, he, he stood up for John Mark when Paul refused to take him on their second missionary journey. He, ref he stood up for John Mark. So what we see in Barnabas' personality is that he was consistently encouraging and he was consistently a man of reputation in the church as a leader but to be an encourager. And so what he said and when he said it had weight to it. And that was a great personality. That was a great personality. Second thing is this, his gifts, Barnabas' gifts. Barnabas' gifts. He was a gifted preacher and teacher. The church at Antioch uh, recognized his gifts as he ministered there over a year. Uh, he was commissioned by the guidance of the Holy Spirit to take the gospel to other people. We read that as well, to take the, the offering uh, that they had raised there. Uh, we read in Acts chapter 11. He was known for equipping the saints in the ministry. He found Paul, who was in Tarsus. He brought him back to Antioch to help teach. And they, as I mentioned, stayed there for a year. He would go with Paul on these missionary journeys. In, in the first journey they went on, uh, they went to Cyprus. Um, he, he worked to develop a strategy with Paul to, to sort of get together in their ministry and what they were going to do on that. Acts chapter 15 is a fascinating story about how he worked with John Mark. We don't have time to go into great detail. That first missionary journey, and, and Paul would go on three missionary journeys that we know of, to, to work with churches and, and, and to proclaim the gospel. That first trip, Barnabas and Paul went on, and John Mark did as well. But for whatever reason, John Mark stopped during the trip. Now, we don't know Paul personally, obviously, but we can sort of see that, that Paul's life and his ministry, what he was called to and radically changed. I mean, he was on a mission and he wasn't going to let anything change that. So for their second trip, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark. And Paul said, no, I'm not taking him. He quit on us the first time. I refuse to take him. Well, what we see is that the two sort of had a disagreement. And so Barnabas took John Mark and, and Paul went on with Silas and they went on. Now, we don't know a great detail, but what we do know and what we do understand is that Barnabas, one of his gifts in encouraging was really not only uplifting, but pouring into people. I mean, he poured into Paul early on, but he also poured into John Mark. And the reason that we understand and we know this is that later on in Paul's life, he makes mention several times about John Mark and how he was an encouragement to him. In fact, toward the end of his life, he mentions to send for John Mark because of the work that he's done and the encouragement that he is. And so what we see in, in the results of John Mark is that Barnabas poured into his life, spent time with him, and really took a chance on him when Paul didn't want to. But he believed there was value in John Mark. And John Mark would go on, obviously, to be such a great leader in the church. Man, it, it's amazing when you have someone that pours into you. 
I can remember, and I mentioned this several weeks ago, and and had a um, a napkin from it. But I, I remember again early on in college, and and the church I went to, Meadowview Baptist, which is still there, a very small church, and um, at the time, it was a very small church, and. We had a lot of college students that went out to that church, and our first pastor, Pastor Jeff Copes, is there, and 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 he took this church over, and it's just widow ladies. That was it. There's like four or five widow ladies. A lot of college students came out there, and, and it was a sweet, sweet time in ministry. I was man and I were freshmen in college, and and um, we just just really cut our teeth and learned a great deal and when Pastor Copes would leave, Pastor Gaddis would take take the church and he would stay there for a few years and then he would go to Oklahoma City and um, but I remember uh, sitting down at Country Kitchen Restaurant with Pastor Copes and telling him I was homesick halfway through my freshman year and I, I was I was going home. I was tired and uh, and I was worn out and I was just going to go home. And I remember Pastor Coves taking the time to encourage me. Encourage me. I, I will never forget that. Man, he, he poured in to me. He didn't have to. I was a young kid who uh, honestly wasn't super faithful and I would have to learn to be faithful. But Pastor Coves would pour into my life. And it would invest into my life. And I, I will tell you that's 1997, 1998. And I will never forget that. I will never forget that. And I can think of other times in my life and my family's life where we were going through various situations and people took time to invest in us. I mean, a preacher, I've shared this a lot. I mean, a preacher took a chance on us. Coming from straight from grad school and from a small church here to Midway, and he took a chance. And and I will forever be grateful for the lessons and the things that I learned from preacher over the years of our internship and going on to Ethiopia and coming back as well. I mean, Barnabas was that type of person. And as believers, we need to be men and women who encourage. We, we pour into people. We invest in people. And that was the life of Barnabas. Number three, Barnabas' is strength. Barnabas' is strength. And he, he exemplified what it means to prefer others before themselves. Philippians 2.3 says this, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let us esteem others before themselves. That was Barnabas. And what a, what a great verse. He shared leadership with Paul. Honestly, Paul would become the central figure of the early church. And, and Barnabas was confident enough in God to understand and to know his role. And to know his place. He sh shared leadership with Paul. As I mentioned, he humbled himself by working to support himself. 1 Corinthians 9.6 uh, He, he uh, yielded to the, to the content of his preaching in Jerusalem so that the elders in the church would be able to examine it. The church there recognized his trustworthiness, his character, and it, that it would be strong enough to represent them at the, to the church of Antioch. The, the Antioch believers had confidence in Barnabas by sending that love offering on to, uh, to the Jerusalem church. Uh, the church would commission Barnabas and Paul to carry the gospel to Asia Minor. His encouraging model uh, for a Christ-centered life serves as a pattern for you and I. He, he was an example of someone who didn't think too highly of themselves, but humbled themselves. And we think about the life of Jesus, what he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Well, Barnabas humbled himself 
and he was a uh, a well-known and a well-gifted and leader in the church and a preacher. But he was known as being an encouragement. He was known as being someone who invested in people. And we don't know a lot about Barnabas' life later on. We don't know how he died. We don't know the circumstances around that. But what we do know and what we see in Scripture is that Barnabas was an encouragement. He was an encouragement. And he had a reputation for that. And he had a reputation for building people up and pouring into their life. And that's what we see in the life of Paul. And that's what we see in the life of John Mark as well. And really today, my question for you is this. Man, are you known as being an encouragement? Are you known as being someone that when people are around, they are energized? Or are you someone that's known for people walking away feeling sort of deflated? Now, look, I'm not saying that everyone, there are some that just have that gift of encouragement. And I'm not saying in every situation that when someone's around you that it is just a uh, smile and everything's peachy because we know that's not the case. Certainly not. But I would say this. We need to pray and ask the Lord to enable us to be men and women that encourage. Remember, words speak life or death. There's power in the tongue. The words that we say, the things that we type out, there's power in those words. And in our world now, more than probably ever, we need encouragement. We need those that are going to represent Christ and glorify Him by speaking words of encouragement. And that was Barnabas' life. Three questions that I want you to focus on this week. And we've not done this before. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you if you do not have the worksheet. I'm going to ask you to write these down and I want you to focus on these this week. Number one is this. In the early stages of your relationship with Christ, who encouraged you to persevere? How did he or she do that? So when you first became a Christian, if you're watching tonight, you've given your life to Jesus and you've been saved 50 years or five months or 20 years, whatever that looks like, who is someone early in your walk that really encouraged you? They really encouraged you. Because what I, I find is a lot of times when I think back on those people, it continues to spur me to be someone that encourages. Second thing is this. In, in what way or ways can you encourage a new believer or a church member this week? What, what is some way that you can encourage someone this week in your church or perhaps somebody that's recently saved? What is something you can do? Whether that's an encouraging note, whether that is giving them a gift card, whether that is just walking to them or calling them, jumping on the phone and saying, look, I just want you to know I'm praying for you and I just want you to know how encouraged that you are to me. I mean, I was thinking about uh, when I first came back here to Midway, 2018, I sat down for a meeting and, and I had some balloons and different things like that with some, um, some, of, some of the staff and, and Hannah Stobbs had written me a card just welcoming me back to the staff and, and just saying how much she was excited to work with me. And, and, um, and, and I remember reading that card, and I still have that card. And that was, that was an encouragement to me. And, and since then, I, I've gotten cards where people have written, and um, they have just said, hey, look, I'm just praying for you. I just want you to know um, that, that we love you. Uh, man, when I was in the hospital and I was sick, uh, I was overwhelmed with emails and cards and phone calls for my family and myself. And it meant so much. It, it, 
meant more than I could ever explain. But, but what is a way this week you can encourage someone? And then number three, what are, what are some ways that you can follow the examples that we've looked at tonight and help a fellow believer that's in a difficult situation? Verses 27 through 30 that we just read. And let me read those again to us here. In these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine through the world. The disciples, according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. And so, what we see is this offering was taken. So, not only am I asking you how you can be encouragement to someone this week, but I'm also asking you, what is some way that you could help a fellow believer that is going through a difficult situation? What is something you can do to be an encouragement to someone going through a difficult situation? And the truth is, especially at this time, there are a lot of people that are going through very, very difficult situations, perhaps even watching tonight. So, so what are some ways that we can encourage, but what are some ways we can do something to help those that are maybe going through a difficult situation. The life of Barnabas. What an incredible, incredible life. And there is so much application for you and I as well. Man, I want to encourage you if you're watching tonight and you're saying, Craig, you, you have talked about Barnabas. You have talked about what we should do as Christians, but I'm not a Christian. I, I want to encourage you tonight. Tonight can be the night of salvation. It is confessing your sins and putting your trust in Jesus Christ. And man, I, I want to encourage you to do that. And man, my, my prayer for you is that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have given your life to Jesus, that you have put your faith and trust in Jesus. And, and I'd love to help you walk through that. Um, if there's anything that I can do, man, email me, call me, let me know. Know for sure that you've given your life to Jesus. If you're a Christian, then this lesson tonight, this brief look at the life of Barnabas is for you and I. A man known as an encouragement. A man known for pouring his life into people and investing in people. And my question for you and I is this. Are we sons and daughters of encouragement? Do we encourage? Do we pour into people? And if you would say, Craig, that's not me, then my prayer, and I would ask you to pray, Lord, help me to be someone that encourages. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll be done. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to look at the life of Barnabas. And I do pray for each one of us that we would be people that would strive to encourage. Lord, may our words bring life. And I pray for those that are watching that maybe um, just their personality, you, they would say, honestly, I, I tend not to be an encouragement. I just pray that you would build in them just that, that strength to obey what you've called us to do and to speak life to those that they are around. We love you and we praise you. your name I pray. Amen. Midway family, thank you for joining me tonight as we look at the life of Barnabas. Next week, we'll continue our series on looking at the life of James. Love you so very much. Be an encouragement to someone this week. How can you do that? How can you help someone that's going through a difficult situation? And just reflect on that time when you were saved, someone that poured into your life. Maybe even call them and just let them know how grateful you are for them. Love you, Midway family. You guys have a great week. We will see you next week.